Well, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I want to thank, uh, first off, uh, Dr. Manolio for the, the very kind invitation uh, to our office. I want to thank uh, NIH as well for convening uh, this very important meeting. Um, I bring greetings from the Assistant Secretary for Health, Dr. Howard Koh, uh, who wanted to, to be here but, but couldn't be here today, but, but sends his regards. Obviously, this is a critical, critical area, the integration of of genomics with, with clinical medicine, a cutting edge area that will only grow uh, more and more uh, important. Uh, I also want to introduce a, a colleague uh, of mine, Dr. Lisa Lee, who's here uh, with me today, and you'll be hearing from Lisa in just a couple of minutes. Um, she is the executive director of the Presidential Commission for the Study of Bioethical Issues. They've tackled issues related to genomic medicine, and, and uh, Lisa's going to talk a little bit about their work uh, in, in a couple of minutes, and that commission is housed. Um, within the Assistant Secretary for Health's office as well. Um, I think many of you uh, uh, who are uh, a part of Health and Human Services know about the, the mission of the Assistant Secretary for Health's office, but just to, to review, uh, the, the responsibility is broad. It's to help uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services and the Department uh, and provide leadership in ensuring in ensuring coordination and collaboration on key public health issues. So we're broad, uh, actually very broad. We have uh, 12 uh, public health offices uh, uh, in uh, a variety of areas. So we have offices focusing on, on, on subsets of the population, office on minority health, women's health, adolescent health, family planning. We have offices that focus on key public health issues, whether it's vaccines or disease prevention, HIV AIDS, blood safety. We do have a few regulatory offices, uh, the Office for Human Research Protections, uh, whose director, uh, Dr. Jerry Menikoff, actually wanted to be here today but just got pulled off to a last minute meeting. Uh, we have an office on, on um, research integrity as well. The Surgeon General's office is within our office. So again, quite broad um, and, uh, in terms of, of our responsibility, 12 public health offices. We also have 10 presidential or, or secretarial advisory committees and Dr. Lee's uh, commission is, is one of those 10. Uh, we're currently doing a scan of, of our office uh, in terms of trying to understand who is working uh, in the areas of, of genomic medicine, um, and, and I think that will be uh, quite revealing. Um, obviously, Lisa's work and, and Jerry's work uh, does touch on that interface, but I did want to just touch on, in the couple of minutes I had, um, on one substantive area that's being led uh, through our Office on Disease Prevention and Health Promotion. Many of you have heard of healthy people, I hope. Uh, healthy people are the nation's health objectives uh, first uh, set out in 1979. Uh, every decade, there are a new set of health objectives. Um, healthy People 2020 was, uh, was issued in the latter stage of 2010. And again, these are hundreds of objectives, uh, the nation's health objectives, which uh, we track over time to see if we're making progress. Uh, there are actually 42 topic areas um, for which these, these objectives are categorized, and actually uh, one of the new topic areas in Healthy People 2020 is genomic medicine. Uh, this is led by, by CDC. You'll hear from Dr. Curry in a few minutes. Uh, uh, it's also co-led by ARC. You've heard uh, for, from Dr. Clancy. Um, so, genomic medicine is a new topic area. Um, the goal is to improve health and prevent harm through valid and useful genomic tools in clinical and public health practice. There are actually two now objectives in Healthy People 2020 related to genomics. One is actually, it's actually one, one in practice and one in development, uh, and they stem from recommendations made from independent panels on genetic testing based on thorough review of the scientific evidence, and I just want to run through uh, both of these recommendations so you know these objectives uh, that, that we're following. They're both in the area of, of cancer prevention. The first recommendation is from the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force. It's a recommendation focused on women who have a high-risk family history pattern for breast and ovarian cancer who could benefit from receiving genetic counseling to learn about genetic testing for BRCA1 or 2 mutations. Uh, given that recommendation from the task force, there, there is an objective in healthy people, which is to increase the proportion of women with a family history of breast and or ovarian cancer who receive genetic counseling. Now in 2005, based on data from the National Health Interview Survey, which CDC tracks, about 35 percent of, of women with a family history of breast 
and or ovarian cancer receive genetic counseling. Uh, that's in uh, 2005. In 2010, that number jumped to about 53%. So again, tremendous progress in those five years, and you can imagine this will continue to track upwards. Given that this is also an A or B recommendation of the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force, there are implications here because of the Affordable Care Act and, and, and the waiving of cost sharing for recommended services. So this is certainly an area that, that we are following through healthy people. Now, the second recommendation actually comes from the Evaluation of Genomic Applications in Practice and Prevention Working Group. This is a, a recommendation related to col uh, colorectal cancer screening. Uh, the idea that, that those newly diagnosed with colorectal cancer should receive counseling and educational materials about genetic testing uh, to seek um, individuals who might actually have a hereditary um, predisposition uh, of colorectal cancer. Um, this is Lynch syndrome for, for many of you who are familiar uh, with this. So there is a developmental, um, I think it's still developmental, a developmental objective to increase the proportion of persons with newly diagnosed colorectal cancer who receive genetic testing to identify a Lynch syndrome, and this is being tracked again by uh, through CDC and, and, and NIH data. So, th so again, those are just two examples of, of really, I think, cutting edge over the last few years applications of using genomics um, uh, that are being used, um, certainly at least for BRCA, uh, by frontline providers that we're now tracking on a po from a population health perspective through healthy people. Uh, we realize this is an important area. The future of medicine will continue to fully embrace uh, genomic m medicine. So, um, so I think that's that's very exciting. So I'm going to just stop here. I'm going to ask um, Dr. Lee uh, to offer some additional thoughts, uh, as well as to discuss how her office's specific efforts interface with genomic medicine, just so you have a broader understanding of, of, of OASH's work um, uh, and how we uh, link to this topic. Uh, Lisa, do you want to?